Hi, this is John Malvey from my Bookkeeper software talking to you today about vendor management within Bookkeeper. Vendors within Bookkeepers are companies or individuals that you want to make expense payments towards or you want to track payables for. In the payable section of the Bookkeeper main page, you'll see the manage vendors icon here. And when you click on here, you can see your list of vendors that you've set up in Bookkeeper. Now you don't have to create all of your vendors ahead of time in order to use them in transactions. You can create them on the fly, but if you need to manage them, then you can go here. So I'm going to add a new vendor. His name is Bob's Office Supply Store. And I'm just gonna tab through this other contact information. You can add it if you'd like. By default, the print on check as automatically defaults to whatever the company name is. If you want to have the name that's printed in the payee section of the check to be a little bit different, then you can just modify that here. Say I wanted to say it was downtown. And then that is what will appear on the payee of a check. The inactive checkbox here is if you have an existing vendor and you can't delete it because they're existing transactions, but you're not going to be making any more payments to them and so you'd want to take them off of your list. You can click the inactive button and when you save it, it'll no longer appear in the list. Don't worry, you can always reactivate it if you need to, but this way it keeps the list clean. If you have an opening balance that you want to have for this vendor, you can check this box here. And when this vendor is saved, a pop-up will show asking you what the amount and the date and the account of the opening balance should be. And then Bookkeeper will go ahead and create a payable for that that you can make transactions towards. On the Detail tab, you'll see the type of vendor this is. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be a standard vendor. There are a couple other types that are in, in rare circumstances to use, but we won't get into that. Uh, the payee dropdown is only applicable for a third factor type, uh, again, which is something you're rarely going to use. But if you need more information on that, you can dig into the help file. You can set a default account for your vendor. Right now, it defaults to I don't know, but you can select any account that you have in your GL account. If you don't see it here and you want to add, you can click on this link here and it'll bring you to your chart of account maintenance. If you want to have a default memo set up for your vendor that will appear on checks, you can just put that here. And then when it's created, the check is created or transaction is created, you'll see that memo appear. If your vendor is a contractor or a consultant that needs to have a 1099, you need to check this 1099 checkbox. When Bookkeeper goes and produces 1099s, it looks for this flag to be set for vendors and it will produce 1099s for these vendors. If you're producing 1099s and you don't see a, a vendor or a consultant that you would, should see, uh, make sure this box is checked. You can always check it after the fact that the transactions were created and the 1099s will go and grab this and create a 1099 for it. When it is a 1099, you can set up the tax ID for that, uh, for that vendor or consultant. If you have custom fields, you can enter those here. If you have something specific, you can uh, that's applicable to all different types of vendors. You can set that up. We'll show you how to do that in the Manage Company setup, but you can enter that information here. The company's website, if you want to track that, you can have that here. Entering a value here, and once it's saved, there'll, there'll be a link here that'll quickly bring you to that company's website. You can put in the login ID and password for reference if you need to log in. If you want to track an image of the vendor, for whatever reason, you can have five different images for this particular vendor. You can add an image, be able to view it full size and remove it as you need to. The transaction section will get populated as you create transactions for this particular vendor. It'll group all the transactions by checks or payo POs or payables. Any transactions that you have will be listed here. You can quickly jump to them. So I'm going to go ahead and save this vendor. And because I said I want to specify an opening balance, it says, okay, how much do you want? What account does that apply to? And the due date and any kind of description. So now that I save this, you can see my new vendor is here. It created an, a, a payable transaction. And if I close this and I go to pay my bills, you can see that I have a payable transaction for $1,000 here that I can make a payment towards. In other videos, we'll get into 
the whole payable and bill payment section. So now going back to my vendor. So let's say now I want to make it inactive because I no longer want to use this vendor. So I can click it as inactive. I click OK, and he's no longer in the list. But if I want to get him back, I go to the menu option and say activate vendor. And in here, you'll see the vendor. I can say, yes, please reactivate him. Click OK. And if I go back to manage vendors, Bob's off the supply store is there. So here's another vendor that I had set up just to show that the first time around, I didn't specify an opening balance, but later on I wanted to. So instead of a checkbox, there's a button that'll exactly do the same thing. So I click the button, it's gonna give me the same window and allow me to enter an opening balance. For this vendor here, I do have transactions that have been set up. So you can see the transactions area is grouped by the different types of transactions for this vendor. So I have checks, payables, purchase orders, any other types of transactions will show up here. Now, if I wanted to go get information about this, I can just click and it'll bring me right to the check. Now, there's a context menu associated with vendors. So if I want to do a quick jump to creating a check or creating some other kind of transaction, I can do that. If I want to combine vendors, let's say I, over the course of time, I've created two different instances of the same vendor and they both have transactions. So what I can do is say, I want to combine the vendors. So this company that I had selected here, and then I can say, this is the company I want to move it to. And then all the transactions from this selected company will be moved into whatever company you select here. And that's all there is with managing vendors. And again, you don't need to create vendors ahead of time in order to create them in a transaction. And we'll see that in other videos that create the different transactions. You can see how that's done. So thanks for watching and enjoy our other videos.